my work is actually quite simple. <coughs> I have many drawings as a study, as a laboratorium uh, for my bigger, large uh, canvases. Uh, and normally I have something in mind which I want to express on my canvas of my work. But uh, yes, the, uh, I enter my studio, I look around and I get some ideas. I started to do some drawings, which later you can see. <coughs> then from that many drawings, I create new things on my large canvas. And then it started. It took me like around two or three weeks in one B piece like one and a half meter to two meters so depends on the size sometimes and yeah it's a uh, but basically it's based on uh, many drawings I made as a study to uh, for the large works Well, idea may change during the process, depends, depends on the mood and what input do I get uh, daily, like uh, TV news, newspaper, uh, stories from children from their school times or, you know, like how they integrated with their friends from also from other ethnic groups or from the Swiss itself. So the, the things uh, also, but also uh, I get a lot of information from my wife, which is, uh, she's quite active in the social party in, in, in Basel. Or she used to be active. She's less active now, but sure she, she's pro the left. So um, from that side, yeah, I could learn how the the things, and this is also influencing uh, my my art as well. I'm quite flexible as an artist. You can say I'm flexible. I could work anywhere. I could I could work in the crowd. I could work in the other place. I could work in the very quiet and uh, deserted place somewhere. And I could work also surrounded by friends while they are talking or, you know, like uh, discussing things with me in the studio. I, uh, also, sometimes I work on the wall on the... I'm not a graffiti artist, but sometimes I get the commission doing something on the wall and where people also passing by or stop and look at me. That was okay for me so I I'm glad that I could work in different kind of situation so it's it's no problem for me to work somewhere else I I feel challenged by that even sometimes I hate to, uh, working alone because it's so quiet too quiet of course I mean music is so has been always part of my daily life a uh, as I, I told you, I listen to heavy metal, uh, punks, and sometimes reggae a bit, and also sometimes like a little bit hip hop. So there's always the, the sound in the studio. <laughs> I mostly use acrylic paints on canvas with the reason that it's it dries very quick it doesn't smell uh, any anything I used to paint with canvas a long time ago but it always smells really hard chemical and now my studio is not that big so during this winter like now it's uh, it's impossible to work with oils 
So acrylic is the the solution, good solution. I mainly started with the background first and then put the dark outline not always black but sometimes also like very dark red or blue but outline uh, is important in my work as you can see here and uh, different kind of figures sometimes when there is a kind of complicated figures to make it faster I just use that uh, projector but I uh, rarely use it and uh, after the outline I put some colors on it and then at the end I may erase some colors which I already uh, put on some figures and then change or add another color so there is always uh, having a at the end uh, the contrast between the background and the main figures so it's actually uh, basically it's it's uh, the classic way of doing it one of the classic way of doing it nothing extraordinary nothing special but uh, i'm glad that i study a lot of figures so if people see in my show there's always a new figures coming up although few figures may appear the same like same figures coming from time to time to the new works but the main figure always different because figures are important to my work let's say animals human figures or the combination of those two like uh, uh, metamorphosis figures and uh, I do it in my own way more comical more funny sometimes weird but uh, you can trace down oh this is from this animal oh this is kind of the person look like this reminds us of someone whatever so uh, but uh, animals yes I I mostly do that uh, the animal figures human being always close to animals since the ancient times there's always animals in the in the cave paintings in their daily life even until now everyone has pets but <clears throat> I, the, I think we should treat animals also as as human being with love with with cares because what I see here is really interesting that the animal can be part of our family here in the West but in the East I think we we don't really care about animals they how they supposed to be we kill things because <coughs> we want to eat them because we don't have money enough to survive so uh, but with the education nowadays we are getting better the younger generation they really also appreciate the nature and the animals uh, which is living in the either in the nature or in the house as as a pet at the moment yes at the moment, um, octopus and squids, or the latest one, is rabbit because the long ears and it often appears in the Easter time, which is especially in the Western that the rabbit has a symbolic things even the playboy girls having the <laughs> rabbits <laughs> well they 
I think octopus has been my interest the last uh, few years because it's a symbol of ocean. But uh, I I like the dead octopus with skull octopus as a symbol of our uh, polluted ocean, dirty ocean, which is uh, often uh, appear to my paintings. And I even got the, a tattoo here, a dead octopus, also a symbol of uh, our polluted sea. Yes, we are the biggest archipelago countries in the world, uh, which uh, Indonesia consists of, I think, around 17,000 islands, if I'm not mistaken, big and small. So uh, the sea is really uh, means something special to us because uh, we are surrounded by the sea. Not, not, not everyone surrounded by the sea. Some tribes are living inland or near the mountains, but a lot of uh, ethnic groups uh, living by the sea. So uh, there's always a kind of stories, folk stories, folk folklore about the sea, and we also have in in Java and Bali. People believe in the South Sea of Java, meaning the Indian Ocean, there is the Queen of the South Sea, which is <coughs> guarding uh, the fishermen who is uh, on their work uh, catching the fish. Or from time to time, they also the, the goddess could be also angry and then make the, the people drawn and couldn't found the dead body. But, and also in Bali, for instance, <clears throat> if someone died and then we cremate the, the, the dead body and the ashes should be released on the ocean. And also some Hindu uh, ceremonies also after the offerings, after they pray in the temple, they brought the offerings again to the sea and release it to the sea meaning back to the creature, to the God. So uh, she always uh, being part of our daily life. Not also, not only culturally and geographically, but also uh, spiritually. Even for me, when I was, <coughs> when I was, let's say, 13 or 14, I was really wanted, I was wanting to be a sailor. I mean, that was in the 70s, early 70s. Uh, why? Because for us, for average Indonesian, for average Indonesian boys or men, I think being a sailor is the only way you could go abroad for free by working in the big ship. <coughs> for that idea, um, yes, uh, I, I made my tattoo again, a ship with three masts. I think this is one of the three Columbus ships that came to America. And also this kind of tattoo, kind of sailor style, old school kind of tattoo. So this is to, to commemorate my, my will of being sailor when I was young. So the sea is always special for us. I was born in Salatiga. This is a little town in central Java. This is in the mountain and uh, it's average. I come from um, a kind of not rich, not poor family. 
my father was a, a army officer and was actively also uh, in the guerrilla war against the Dutch who tried to come back in the late 40s and then actively become a, a, a professional army. So uh, my mother just a housewife and I have three other brothers and one sister. And as you know, Indonesia is uh, geographically uh, located between two continents, Asia and Australia, and also between two oceans, South uh, Indian Ocean and Pacific. So because of this uh, location or the uh, because of its geographically uh, geographical uh, location Indonesia has been always uh, visited by either traders or the conquerors like uh, and also a lot of melting pots of different kind of cultures from from the past the the Hindu games the Buddhist game then the European came for the spice uh, for the spice uh, or for trades, the Chinese and then the Arabic, the Arabs, who not only wanted to to trade but also to spread over the Islam. So for this kind of mixture, uh, that created Indonesia now, which is so uh, eclectic, so so mixed. From different kind of background, of course, we are the uh, the biggest Islam country in the world, and also was respected by other Islam countries as uh, the very democratic, very tolerant Islam. Although a little group of uh, right wing Islam tried to have their <coughs> influence in our country, but I believe that. Uh, most of us are still wanting that Indonesia is still a mix of culture, has a very diverse uh, or um, a big diversity in, in cultures, and that we are, I want, and everyone wants that Indonesia will stay Indonesia, not as an Arab, not as American, <coughs> just Indonesia as the land of many cultures. When I was 16, after that obsession becoming a, a, a sailor, then one or two years later, I got the a drawing teacher at our class, I was still like, let's say 14 years. And I joined the extracurricular uh, lesson in the afternoon after the, the, the school uh, lessons. Uh, I chose paintings. So this teacher really uh, taught us how to use oil paints on canvas in the right way. So from that, I, uh, from that time on, I was so uh, interested in, in doing paintings and more seriously in it. And then at the celebration of our school, <coughs> there was a big uh, fest at our school. And so the, our group, the, <coughs> the group of paintings, we had a small exhibition at our class and then I could sell my paintings. That was the first time for me to sell my my very own painting. You know, I was so proud, and it makes me uh, also uh, confident about what I have now in in the skill. So I I got the skill to paint. So I want to continue that, but unfortunately, my father, as a ex army officer. He didn't like it at all that I wanted to be an artist. 
But I said I want to be an artist from that time on. So here I am. <laughs> and then after high school, I wa- actually I wanted to go to the art academy directly. But as I said to you earlier, my father didn't allow me because he said I remember the, this kind of words. Like, oh, why should you be an artist? It's it's a, a waste of time, you know, like <clears throat> artist is just a loser, you know, like, okay. But I I, I was having a really hard time at it. Uh, uh, then I just went to ordinary college, which is, which was, that was the uh, college for, for teachers, actually, for training to be a teacher. And I chose English <laughs> because that was the only subject which I also like a lot. My father was happy, but after two years, I got bored again. And then without telling him, I moved to Yogyakarta, to a bigger city or to more like more student city. And I applied for the art school and I was accepted. My father was upset, but I don't care. So I, from that time on, I started to learn more technique, more styles, and knows the art history, not only from the West, but also from the Eastern part of the world. So the, the style changing a lot until I went to Europe again, and then I changed the style again until now. So, so through all different kind of styles. Yes, the, it's always been a, the, the theme of, uh, environment the uh, a little bit politics here here and there but most most of the time it's also a self irony the from myself uh, from my own experience living in the west coming from from Indonesia living in Switzerland and so uh, being a, the the artists, let's say non-Western artists, living here in Switzerland, one of the richest country, one of the safest country, they say. But <clears throat> so a lot of uh, things going on. But also, I I still want, as I said, that uh, bringing up the message, not only the big thing, the big issue, but also my personal issue as well, in finding my identity here either as an artist or as a husband of my wife or as a father of uh, two kids or as a part of the whole society here in Basel or as an Indonesian artist. Well, identity, it's, I've been always searching identity. Does, it, it, it doesn't mean that I, I have identity, of course, but I'm still searching it in in order to to be more uh, how you call it, more fit uh, in the society or more well accepted or you know it's it's always a process always i never stop that process i also uh, this is also part of my my art actually that the process is is important and i i want this process even until the end of my life, because uh, if you see even Picasso when when he found this cubism and he's still trying again and again, uh, either the technique, the theme, or the the subject matters, like you know, it's I I like that kind of process that I don't want to get established and stop. No, it's. I want my art is still in process. My life is still in process. So it's always dynamic. The change. Either 
the bad chains or good chain, the up and downs. It's it's okay. It's dynamic. I want that. The near future project or plan is to join again this uh, the big art fair in Hong Kong. It's Art Basel Hong Kong with my gallery in Jakarta in March. And then, and my, let's say, big project is because this year I'm getting 60. So I want to make a big solo show at the gallery in Jakarta to uh, commemorate my 60th anniversary. So it should be kind of special because I did that when I, I got 50 as well 10 years ago so this year I want to make something special again by doing a solo show again yeah luckily it has been good in Asia so it it is indeed it's kind of absurd uh, bringing ASEAN money, living in Switzerland, it should be the opposite. Get the money in Switzerland, living in Indonesia, but I'm the opposite. But that's okay. That's typical me. That's typical Adihara that I'm always against all the stream. So I, I always want to be a different thing. So it's okay. So, so far so good. So I, I still uh, could do things a lot in Asia at the moment. Art in general is supposed, ideally, it's supposed to be a bridge between two different cultures, two different political view, two different, you know, any kind of ideas. So it's always in the middle as a bridge. So with art, uh, so far with the art, I can meet other people, other society, other class. So, yeah, from other culture as well. So this is, uh, and I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy uh, to live as an artist. And this is my choice. want to know more about my work and myself or the activities I've been doing so far until now you can check my website which is done by the uh, Swiss government the cultural uh, department it's called ad.hara at bluewind.ch slash hara or just google my name and you can see more activities in there, more things, more uh, exhibitions and articles all about me and all the interviews. And I work mostly with Nadi Gallery in Jakarta. You can also Google Nadi Gallery or nadigallery.com. So there you will see more information about my works. <laughs>